CRIEnglish.com, connecting China with the world. The most important bilateral relationship in the world today. Uh, I said this back in 1998, or even earlier. Um, now, more critical than ever, because China is increasingly, as we all know, becoming the second power in this world, um, economically and increasingly politically as well. Uh, if the two countries, the United States and China, do not get along, I don't think that we can hope for peace, prosperity in our future. And that we're going into some, I think, rough period. Uh, and um, with the elections, we all know that uh, uh, in the past, China has been used as a political card. Uh, but in the last, I would say, hmm, 10 years or so, maybe that has not been such, so much the case. Um, but I think we're now reverting again. The Republican candidates have also made uh, contentious remarks about China. You can chuck those remarks off to political campaigning. And then when the candidates become president, uh, then when they are governing, the tune changes. But nevertheless, uh, I do not think that we are in a warm and fuzzy period. And of course, we can't uh, dismiss the fact that ideologically, we're two very different political systems. So you add that all together, um, it is unavoidable that we see issues from different vantage points. Um, and we often misinterpret each other's um, actions, motivations. For one, I think on the media front, uh, we all see others in our own image. The Chinese uh, th see our media as a mirror image of theirs. Uh, the U.S. China Education Trust, we have been working on media education for some years. And the Chinese have a very hard time believing that our government does not control the media, like the Chinese government does its media. They just can't believe that when, let's say, the New York Times or the Washington Post or whatever newspaper uh, publishes something that is very negative about China, that it wasn't at this express instruction of our government, that it expresses our government view of China. And there is a considerable school of thought in China that American media demonizes China. And through our media education programs, we lay out, we do not preach. We lay out what the facts are, what American media is really all about, that the president cannot control the media. In fact, oftentimes the media uh, and our political uh, leaders are actually in conflict and confrontation. I think one area where Americans really do misunderstand China is with respect to the fact that um, China is no longer a monolith. Uh, no one person can dictate throughout China what to do. That the central government and the provincial governments and the local governments have different interests and may often be at loggerheads. And that the central government cannot any longer control whatever the country does in terms of, for example, IPR, in terms of corruption, um, 
even investments. China is different today than what many Americans have in their minds. Now the Chinese have always felt, and they still believe, that Chinese understand America much better than Americans understand China. Now that might be true, you know, the Lao Bai Xing in China certainly knows more about America than our average citizens in this country. However, what I discovered was that China's American experts really cannot compare with America's China experts. China's American experts are interested and maybe do some research and work on U.S.-China relations, on contemporary issues. American China experts spend their entire, dedicate their entire lives to studying China and all aspects of China. You cannot be, be an American expert if you only look at contemporary issues. You've got to study American society, American culture, American history, American literature, on and on and on. And this is why uh, I decided that the U.S.-China Education Trust could do a great deal in helping strengthen China's American studies so that more and more of their scholars will be, go beyond just the surface. Uh, wherever possible, we try to bring uh, Chinese young uh, professors uh, here so that they can uh, do more research, broaden their own experiences and background, and see in practice how uh, America handles certain issues. So we try to strengthen not only the, uh, the intellect in terms of understanding an issue, the theory, we also try to add a little bit of a practical experience because I think that theory often does not really reflect uh, reality. So we do combinations of different kinds of programs. The students, when they come back, uh, in fact, uh, I have a report over there uh, from the University of uh, North Alabama. Um, their students had, that was their first program on international exchange. And the students had never been to China before. Many of them had never been abroad before, nor had passports. And some of the, you know, the uh, letters that they write are quite heartwarming. That, you know, it's, it's, it's life-changing because, um, now, because, th again, this is because this group of students had never had a chance to go abroad before. Life-changing because it opens their eyes, opens their minds, and it allows them to see beyond what is their immediate uh, possibilities. And I think uh, that is probably one of the best things that uh, anyone can do for young people. I think there is no replacement to face-to-face -to -face exchanges, and I will always stand by that. I have said that you cannot capture the nuance of a culture by looking at pictures or the internet. Um, you cannot savor, let's say, the food of a country unless you actually eat it. <laughs> Maybe that's a better example. So uh, the internet uh, technology goes so far, but in terms of human relations, I don't think there's any replacement or any substitution for interpersonal exchange. Since Nixon, Policy with respect to China has really not changed dramatically. Um, and my anticipation is, regardless of whether it's Democrat or Republican, uh, who wins in the next round in 2012, um, when you're president, you deal with reality. Can the our two countries um, not depend on each other? I don't think so.